JVP or the jugular venous pressure which is most oftenly studied as a JVP waveform is a topic that students cram up before their bed school examination and thereafter they tend to forget it. What's the reason behind this? The reason very very simple. Students do not try to understand the concept of JVP and they do not correlate the JVP with the events of the cardiac cycle. This is a two part video on jugular venous pressure which will help you in understanding and subsequently learning the concept of JVP. In the first video, we will simply learn a normal jugular venous pressure waveform and we will try to correlate this JVP trace with the events of the cardiac cycle. Let's start with the basic concept of jugular venous pressure. We will start with the introduction, simply the definition. JVP stands for jugular venous pressure. J for jugular, V for venous and P for pressure. It is the oscillating top of the vertical column in the right internal jugular vein. Mind you, the right internal jugular vein. What does it reflect? It reflects the pressure changes in the right atrium during the cardiac cycle. So, JVP tells us about the right atrial pressure changes. Harrison says that it is and actually it is the single most important bedside measurement for estimating the volume status of a patient. So if you want to assess the volume status, whether the patient dehydrated, fluid overloaded, then jugular venous pressure bedside measurement, bedside valuation is the single most important bedside measurement. So this is the right internal jugular and this is the oscillating column that we see in the neck. Why it is always right internal jugular vein? Why don't we say uh, uh, the, right, uh, the right external jugular vein or the left internal jugular vein? There are two reasons. Right internal jugular vein is in the direct communication with the right atrium so whatever happens in the right atrium is directly reflected into the right IJV that is the reason we see the JVP in the right IJV let's see the anatomy this is the internal jugular vein external jugular vein right subclavian artery uh, right subclavian vein the right subclavian vein along with the innominate vein and the IJV forms the superior vena cava that drains into the RA. So, like this arrow, the IJV, the right IJV is in the direct communication with the right atrium. So, whatever happens in the right atrium is reflected in the internal jugular vein. The left, I, IVC, uh, the left IJV is somewhere here. So, it is not in the direct communication. Similarly, what happens, the IJV, although it ultimately drains into the right atrium through the superior vena cava, but still, it first drains into the right subclavian vein that subsequently drains into the superior vena cava. So that is EJV is not in the direct communication. Also, the right internal jugular vein is valveless. There are no valves. So there is no obstruction uh, of the reflection of RA and the pressure changes of the RA into the IJV. So the waveform generated in the RA is accurately reflected into the right internal jugular vein. Now let's come to the waveform. In the waveform, there are three positive waves and two descents or troughs. The positive waves are, you can see, the one going upwards are the A wave, then a small C wave and the third one is the V wave. The troughs or the descents are the X and the Y. So from here it is descending here. So this is X and this uh, descent is what we call a Y descent. So now let's see what causes A, what causes C, X, V and Y. Individually we will see the waves in the troughs. So the blood comes into the RA, from RA it goes to the right ventricle. Now, in the last end of this uh, right atrium, when, when the right atrium drains into the RV, there is a RV, there is a 
atrial systole the atria tends to contract so it pushes the blood into the right ventricle when it pushes the right, uh, blood into the right ventricle and since it contracts there is a upward movement of the jvp upward movement this upward movement is what we call a a wave so this goes yeah this goes up so the a wave is caused by the atrial contraction or the atrial systole the ra has contracted pushed the blood into rv now what will happen with the ra the ra will now relax so when the ra will relax the waveform will come down the pressure will fall so after the atrial contraction which gave a positive wave, uh, wave that was a wave and now the ra relaxes now the right ventricle goes into systole when the rv contracts it pushes the tricuspid valve this one is a tricuspid valve slightly towards the ra slightly towards the ra that is the tricuspid valve bulges into the ra in the early part of the right, right ventricular systole that bulging of the tricuspid valve gives us a small positive wave that we uh, what we call as a c wave while the ra is relaxing the tricuspid valve due to rv systole bulges into the ra and gives a small c wave now after the c wave the ra continues to relax continues to relax and it goes down and relaxes fully so this full relaxation is what we call the x descent the x descent descent means relaxation the x descent is due to the atrial relaxation or the atrial diastole this part from a till the bulging of the tricuspid is x and what we call from c right till the bottom is what we call x prime descent rv contracts and it pulls the ra floor uh, downwards so this descent causes the further relaxation that is the x prime descent and finally after the atrial contraction bulging of the tricuspid a small positive we finally have a fully relaxed right atrium now when the right atrium has fully relaxed what will happen in a relaxed cardiac chamber the diastole uh, uh, the filling of the chamber starts and the, when the filling of the chamber will start then there will be a positive wave this is the positive wave what is v wave this is the positive wave after the right atrium has completely relaxed till here it has completely relaxed and now filling 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 and this has reached the, this point so this is the v wave after the uh, ra has fully relaxed the blood comes blood comes blood comes and it now fills so this gives a positive pressure and this is what we call a v wave so the v wave is formed by the atrial filling and a passive increase in the volume and pressure of ra it is a passive increase see here in when the a wave was formed there was a active contraction of the ra in this this waveform is formed by the passive filling of the uh, right atrium after the ra is full uh, is filled fully now what will happen the ra is filled there is a whole lot of blood 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 here now ra has to do something the right atrium now will throw the blood into the right ventricle for throwing the blood in the right ventricle what will happen what should happen the tricuspid valve should open so at v the tricuspid valve opens that when the tricuspid valve opens the ra pressure falls and there is a descent this is what we call a y descent so the first descent was due to the relaxation of ra the second descent is due to the emptying of ra so the tricuspid valve open ra empties and right ventricle passively fills so this is emptying now 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 emptying when it is about to empty fully then what will happen the atria will contract to completely uh, empty itself then a uh, a wave will come then again c wave then again x wave then v wave and the y descent this is a normal how a normal jugular venous pressure 
uh, waveform looks like. I just explained the individual components. What do they depict? What part of the cardiac cycle do they depict? So let's revise. A is active atrial contraction. The RA contracts actively atrial systole. After the contraction, while relaxing, the RV contracts, the right ventricular contracts and the tricuspid valve bulges into the right atrium and gives a small positive deflection. So the C wave is tricuspid valve bulges into the RA and, uh, and the floor continues to descend. So that this X descent is due to the atrial relaxation. At the X, right atrium again starts to fill, the pressure rises, atrial filling and when at, uh, right atrium is adequately filled, then what happens? The tricuspid valve opens so that the RA empties into the RV. At V, the tricuspid valve opens, RA empties and the pressure then falls. This is the Y descent. Now, let's correlate the right atrial uh, JVP, the right atrial waveform that is the JVP with two things. One, the heart sound and the second is the ECG, S1 and S2. How does uh, S1 occur? The S1 is caused by the closure of the mitral and the tricuspid valves. The S2 is due to the closure of the aortic and the pulmonary valves. This was due to the, the C wave was due to uh, the bulge of the tricuspid into the RA. So that means the tricuspid valve had just closed before C uh, the C wave. That is the S1 will come just before the C. And uh, when will the aortic and the pulmonary valve close? Immediately before the uh, tricuspid valve opens, not after, immediately before the tricuspid valve opens. The aortic valve will, uh, the pulmonary valve will close and from the other side, the tricuspid valve will open. The tricuspid valve opens at V. Now, the correlation of JVP with ECG. In the ECG, P wave, what does it denote? It denotes atrial depolarization. That is the atrial systole. The, that is the atrial systole or the atrial contraction. So, the A wave corresponds with the P and after the tricuspid uh, valve closes, right ventricular systole or the systole starts. So the PQRS, uh, the, the QRS, the QRS complex that is the ventricular depolarization, that is the ventricular contraction happens after C. So how do we monitor JVP? We monitor the JVP with invasive monitoring. One is the bedside evaluation, the bedside measurement or the bedside examination. That is out of the scope of this uh, video. We will see the invasive monitoring. So this is a JVP or the central venous catheter. This is how a catheter looks like. This catheter through the neck, through the neck goes into the SVC through the internal jugular vein and lands up at the junction of the SVC and the right atrium and then it measure we can give drugs from these ports and one port is used to measure the jugular venous pressure so I'll show you this is how a jugular venous pressure or the central venous pressure monitor uh, catheter looks like this part goes into the neck and lands the tip the tip lands at the ra svc junction these are the various ports one port is used to measure the jugular venous pressure and the other ports one two and three other ports these are meant for delivering the drugs and the fluids so this is how a center venous catheter looks like and these are all invasive monitorings this is the ecg this is the invasive arterial trace and this is the see, see you can see RAP right atrial pressure this is 5 so this is a right atrial pressure trace that is a JVP trace this is how it looks like on invasive monitoring I will zoom it and show you how the A, C, X, V and Y wave look like see this this is A this small one is C this is X, this is V and here the 
one is the y. A here atria contracts, this tricuspid valve bulges, this uh, atrial relaxation, then atria fills, V the tricuspid valve opens, and then again the atrial uh, atria empties, and at the last of the emptying, then there's again atrial contraction, and here is the A wave. So this was about how a normal JVP uh, trace looks like, what are the various components and how does it look like on invasive monitoring. The second video will be on the abnormalities of JVP waveform and what the pathologies it correlates to.